back out at the, uh, the hacking, having a squid fish today. Uh, I'm in the polycraft, boat 22, fishing out the one side of the boat. A uh, little technique I like using is, is by having them all off the side, I just every once in a while give the boat a bit of a rock. And as you can see, it works all the three lures um, together. So down there, I'd, I'd imagine from underneath the water, it probably looks like a little school of um, lures or shrimp. My squid jig is bouncing around. Uh, especially today, it's so calm, there's not much in the way of uh, boat movement. But by having the rods angled at a bit lower of an angle, as the boat rocks, it exaggerates the moves. So I've already landed one within seconds of being here. Um, let's see if we can grab another one. Every once in a while, pick up the rods. Just give them a bit of a whip. Feed out a little bit of line. Make sure you're dragging them through the weed. It actually moves off my little patch. So I'll have to um, redo a drift. Was, like I said, it was the first drift, so now I know which way we're drifting. I'll be able to position the boat a little bit better. I like doing is every time I catch a squid, I uh, create, I mark it on the sound as a waypoint. Um, that way, over a um, period of time, you end up getting a cluster of um, of waypoints of all the squid that you've landed or caught or hooked up. And what that'll do is it'll give you a good reference point on where to start. So if you start in the center of that cluster. And then from there you work out which way you're drifting and chances are you'll pick up a squid um, usually on the first first drift for sure so we've done that i've done that so far but now i've moved away from my cluster so what i'll do is i'll, I'll bring them up and um we'll see what happens we'll, we'll do another drift over my spots. I don't like getting there too fast or creating too much ruckus or speeding over there and then coming to a halt. But if, we, if there is something under the boat, any squid, we don't want to make them too cautious, I suppose is the word, or too spooked. So I just mosey on, no hurry, no rush. At the same time, I'm always playing with the sounder or um, observing what's on the sounder underneath while I'm doing this. Looking for bait. Uh, again, find the bait, find the fish. It's really no different. Uh, that's what they're hunting. So, yeah, so we'll move back over our marks and we'll uh, have a look, see what, uh, if we can pick up another one. So, today I'm running a combination of uh, Yamashita, Eggy Head, and Yazuri uh, Lewis favorite colors are white, pink and green. I'm running one of each. So far the white has been a successful one. So what I do is I cast um, ahead of the drift. Whilst that's sinking, I'll deploy the other two rods. I'll cast one ahead, one straight down, and then one to the other side. This is when I'm fishing solo. Fishing on the sideways of the current and fishing off the side of the boat and by having the rod slain flatter 
the rods work themselves that wasn't very nice. And there you go. Put the baby on. Squid fishing is it keeps you nice and busy, especially if you fish with multiple rod. You probably the good thing about fishing with multiple rods is you get to you see which lure works better. But um, I know those three colours are pretty good for me. Sometimes one works better than the other, but it keeps you moving all the time, so it keeps you, you know, active. The day goes nice and quick, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, it is fun. You know, when you're waiting for a bite, you're always working the rod. So I'll give it a couple of good whips because if there is a shy one in the distance, you know, he'll see all of a sudden that erratic move. He'll think he's been sneaking up on that on that lure, but um, and then all of a sudden, you by whipping it like that, it looks like the uh, squid jigs or the, the prawn the imitation prawn it looks like it's got a, a whip that there's a squid on its tail, and uh, it looks like it's fleeing. So it makes the squid go all aggressive and they hit, they hit a lot harder which makes for an easier hookup. Fishing out of the Port Hacking today. Another in the background, no secret. Actually marked that squid on the sounder when I um, when I hooked up because I'm right in the center of my cluster so there's no need to mark that one. If I was a little bit off to the side well then I probably would have but um, it's right in my cluster so ten pound line on this one fifteen and twenty pound line on the other two right Twenty pound leader on the big one, and ten and fifteen pound and on this one. Fifteen on the other one. So fishing light with this one. This is sort of almost like my sacrificial, probably a tad on the light side. Yeah, sometimes you do get more bites on the lighter on the lighter line. The little flutters that little bit better. Um, probably a little bit more natural, less less stiff. The leader's less stiff, so. Yeah. As you can see, the rod, the rod's working from the swirl. And even every once in a while, I don't know if you can see because the stability is on the camera. Every once in a while, I'll just give the boat a bit of a, a bit of a shake. And what it does is all three lures simultaneously, uh, you know, like bounce in the water. And if they squid around, they'll look at that and think, oh my god, the prawns know we're here. Uh, yeah. That's my theory anyway. Whether it has any any uh, proof to it or not, I don't know. But everyone's got to have a theory, don't they? Ten a.m. in the morning. Didn't uh, come out early today. Starting to get a bit cold. It is a bit cold. Of a, of a shake makes it nice fishing in conditions like this is, is you're not drifting too fast but you do need drift most importantly um, if you don't drift you're not covering ground if you're drifting too fast you're not getting your lures in the strike zone so you've got to be down amongst that weed if you're not in the weed you're not going to get a feed
see the way they work. That's why a little bit of a longer rod is good, especially when you leave them sitting in the rod holder. Because that longer rod, if you imagine, you know, the boat lifts 20, 30 centimetres on this side with a swirl. Well, that's exaggerated at that end, so it's almost like a half a metre, a metre lift on that end. Well, not that much, but you know what I mean. It's exaggerated. So it's a natural, natural whip. I'm running lead uh, all the way down to the bottom of the lures. I don't know what size they are. They're probably the size of the tip of your pinky. Um, and then you always adjust that accordingly. If it's windier and you're drifting faster or if it's more, more current, you, you just add more weight. You've got to find that balance where you can get it down there um, quick so you can stay in the zone and keep the lure in the zone. But at the same time, you don't want it too heavy where the lure loses its action. And, uh, you know, you just... Yeah, you don't want it too heavy. You've got to find that balance. All right, well, I'm going to work these lures and see what happens. Drift has changed again, so we are drifting differently. Which is why it's crucial to use your chart plotter. Um, and make sure you're leaving a breadcrumb trail. And what you do is once you've got your cluster, you dive, you, you run across your cluster, you just keep up, um, you just drift you know, 20, 30 metres apart each time until you find your patch of squid and then from there you uh, keep working that drift line until I usually do if, if I go two drifts on the same line with no squid then I'll change I'll change my drift pattern um, but whilst I'm catching squid I'll stay on the same drift line but then once once I um, catch I don't catch squid twice in the same drift then I I change my drift line Send me, the, send me the seal out there. So he's, he's after my squid as well. Uh, you can see him out in the background. Yeah, I'm drifting off my cluster now, so I'm going to have to change my drift pattern. Or I should say, I should need to uh, change my start point. Okay, I'm going to try and explain briefly what I mean by drifting. So I come in, this is hard for me. Okay, so I come in from here. That's where I first started my drift because I thought I'd be drifting north. Um, instead, I drifted across and I picked up my first squid there. So 022. Two, two, um, and I marked it. Um, so I drifted that way. So my second drift, I started back up here thinking that I was going to drift east or west to east. And instead, I drifted south, I come down through here, so what I've done now is I've headed back up, I've positioned myself up there, and now hopefully I'm going to drift down along this edge, and if I'm drifting from north to south, I'm just going to do a series of drifts north to south until I find my patch of screen. I've caught two so far, um, so I'm sort of in the right area, as you can see from my cluster, but um, I've got to find that patch. Um, so this is, and we'll find that honey hole. All right, so that's explaining my drift pattern. Um, and you can see from leaving your breadcrumb trail, um, it works out really well with allowing you to know which way you need to drift. Um, but having said that, I started there and I drifted west to east. So I repositioned myself thinking I'd drift straight through my cluster, but instead I drifted south. So I've come down here and I've repositioned myself up north and now I'm going to drift south. And as you can see, it's starting to leave a breadcrumb trail south. Um, and that's where I'm going to go. Right, so, oh, I've got a line tangled around the tip of my rod, which could be a disaster. I need to attend to that. So we're on. I've marked it. Finding the fish, just take it nice and easy. Don't 
I stick your rod. I want the rod to take up a lot of the pulsing. And if you do feel it pulsing a little harder, drop your rod tip like that. Don't let the rod um, don't fire, you know what I mean? Here's a good one. And I forgot my net, so this will get nasty. one good fish all right so we can get another one might be getting some taps on that other rod he's nice isn't he It's just got a whole bit, a lot more beautiful. A bit of using the longer rods, you get that nice action. Uh, the rod tip absorbs a lot of the pulsing. So nice and easy. So a lot of people just going too hard on them and um, end up pulling the barbs out. Nice and easy. Nice one. Again, drop my neck. What you do is you grab him by the throat. So, that was on my white jig. See that jig has copped an absolute flogging. Um, yeah, my favourite. It's in there. It's in a 3.0. Another nice squid. Another nice one. Did I miss my net? Fish on the wild one, the rod's on. Now I'm on this fight. Just leave him there for a second. Get him in the esky. Triple hookup. Hey, look at that one, it's taking drag. Beautiful. Definitely on the mark. Right on top of a mark that I've caught him here before, so. That's why it's so important to have the cluster. Okay. Not 
man. Good fish. Get the other one in. Seals in the seat. Oh, you would have gotten real good feed. What I've done is I've switched over an orange lure that I had to a no, it was a pink lure. Going over to an orange with a white belly. The white just seems to work for me. Another good fish. And actually, I've gone down to a, I think that's a 2.0. Because um, the current's good. I'm getting down with the ball sinker. So, yeah. Another good fish. A couple of good ones in that drift. Not bad. That was a triple hookup. Fishing rods. I'm not a fan of long butts. Only because as you're whipping, it always grabs your your vest or your shirt. Um, that's a bit of a pain. I'm more of a fan of the shorter butts. Rods like that. I think I just got to tap then. But uh, yeah, big fan of the shorter butts. So you can. Um, Quite easily whip and without it interfering with your jacket or your shirt. So when you think you got a tap like that, give it a couple of yanks. If nothing happens, feed the line back out. So what that looks like is a shrimp that's taken off out of the weed and and um, I've given it a couple of yanks, so it looks like it's taken off and then it's going by letting the line back out. It looks like it's going back um, into a shelter or into um, protection, seeking protection back into the weed and the squid from a distance sees that and goes alright I know where he's gone uh, he's gone back in the weed and slowly makes his way back over to where your your lure is and from there you uh, you then work it a few times and it comes out of the weed so he's gone off that rod and he's come over onto this one now so, yeah nice so that's my theory as well Not a stonker like the other one. Um, we might be dragging weed. No, no, we are on. That's a double hookup. Oya! Oya! He's a biggie. No, we're still only with feeding him five. See? Huge. Definitely a big fish on that line. Oh, yeah, oh we've got a follow up. Fuck, I'm big of a thing. So, what I'm going to do is keep that, keep that in there. Up real quick, and we can get a triple hookup again. So they're very aggressive. Now that's it, triple hookup one, two, three. How good's that? Another triple hookup. All right, let's get him in. Oh, what my neck. Number one. Gonna be a good one. Just taking some line, and this is my um, 20 pound 
20 pound outfit. So, having said that, the drag's not set at a third of the braking strain, it's a bit lighter. But, yeah, it's a nice one. It's a triple hookup, eh? Another one. Good. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, look, he's angry. Another beauty on the orange and white. Nice fish. Nice one. <laughs> hey, you know what's poor fishing? It's poor! <laughs> Alright, let's land this one. That's the third one. Wow, good feed today. Mess is a boat, boat is a mess. But I've happily named the boat Fad 22. Fish attracting device. 22 is off the port hacking. Two is my lucky number. Fad 22 is where I caught my first marlin. Fad 22 is where I caught my first dolphin fish. And Fad 22, what? Did I say two is my lucky number? I did. And uh, it's attracting the fish. All right. I don't know if you can see the ink there. The boat's a bit of a shambles. So a bit of a tidy up now. All right. Good stuff. I'll have a fish on. So this rod actually snagged a bit of weed. And I just let it go, so you can see I'm over the weed. And I'm going to put a small on. Let me tell you, today they are all beautiful fish. Beautiful size. Oh, shit. Gosh, that went up my shirt and I can feel it on my back. Oh, you mongrel. I think the old fads are right off. Yeah, Jake, have a look at this. Oh, he's going to take me through. Look at the boat. Squid kill zone. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Alright. Well, let's clean it up. Can't handle a dirty boat. Well, I'm back. Bit of a flat battery on the GoPro, so I've stopped filming. I've probably got about 15 squid, maybe more, I don't know. I'll have to stop and count actually. Don't want to go over the bag limit. But just an indication of how heavily chewed that lure's getting. And it's still catching fish. But that's ridiculous, isn't it? Look at it. That's just uh, unbelievable. And uh, they're still on the chew, though. So they're still getting the odd one. Um, I also had a little school of kingies bust up around the boat. And by the time I took one of the squid jigs off one of the rods and threw a... Um, a uh, stick bait on there, they disappeared. But every once in a while I see them popping up here and there on the surface. So I may even stop squidding for a while and just keep an eye out for the uh, the bust up and just mosey on over there and see if I can entice them with a, uh, a popper or a, um, a stick bait. But yeah, I've moved spots since the last time you saw me. Work in a different area. Like I said, I got a flat battery on the GoPro and just had it on charge. I thought it was charged to begin with, but that's what happens when you assume. You should always check. But, uh, yeah, it's been a good day so far. 
What time is it? It's one o'clock in the Arvo. I haven't even had lunch yet. I should pull up. Oh, I might be getting an inquiry over here. Let's have a look. That one's hit a snag. That's my favourite lure, but I'll lose that. Let's check the snag. Sometimes what I do is I just whip it a few times like that. And if it's on weed, it'll sort of like tear the weed. It hasn't done that. But what it does is it tears it, but it doesn't pull out of it. And then when you then lock up your, your drag, always pointing the rod down at the lure. Um, you don't want to load the rod up. Uh, yeah, just do that and it usually comes off unscathed. And I think it's yeah, still got it. Bring up weed like that, you know you're in the right area. Other location, just picked up one. Didn't bother turning the camera on, but got a second one now. Down the squid today. This spot's a little bit different, it's only two and a half meters deep. You yeah, know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's only two and a half meters deep, but beautiful size, nice eating size. Good for bait. Now, there might be a certain weed that they breed on or that they like. It's just amazing how territorial they are, you know, when you find them, you'll find them in patches. So it could be a weed or a rock, or there's just something there that attracts them all the time. And that's where they seem to congregate. So just like any form of fishing, you've got to put in the hours to find the spots. You've got to make sure you mark them on your sounder, on your plotter. That way you've got those marks to, uh, to go back to. If you've caught them there once, there's a very good chance you'll catch them there again. We've, just, we've picked three, I've picked three off this spot, so chance of getting another one, it's probably slim, but you just never know, there could be a fourth one. Okay, it moves again. I've done a count, I'm up to 18 squid. So I want two more so I can bag out. I've just got my 19th one. Hopefully we land it. So the beauty of having all these clusters that I keep talking about is you can go to all your clusters throughout the day. And if you pick up a few squid at each cluster, you end up with a nice um, feed of squid. There you go, there's another one. That's number 19. Well, here we go. This is squid number 20. Hopefully we land it. That way we can get back in and uh, clean them. So we got out in the water at about 10 o'clock this morning. It's now 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 2.55. Squid number 20, about to come on board. See what, there's some really big squid amongst the uh, 20 that I got. It's been a really good day. Let me get this boy on board. Number 20. 
Let's go clean them. For those that haven't seen it before, I've got a, um, a keeper net. It's a uh, fish scaler that we throw the squid in and we drag them behind the boat. And what it does is it just gets all the slime off the squid. They come up burnt like, uh, like as if they've been bleached. They come out so white. Um, might even pull the heads off them, that way the water gets inside and uh, cleans the insides of them a bit as well. So stay tuned. Okay, I've started cleaning the squid. So this is what's left. They're in the keeper bag. So what I do is I sever the head from the backbone, pull the head out. This is one of the smaller ones. And then I try and pull the backbone out. Just so the water, the jets get inside, the water when it's tumbling in my tumbler. So, so trying to get it out sometimes because it's slippery. And then they go on the keeper net. So sever, sever the head from the backbone. Pull the head out, head in the tumble bag. Try and pull the backbone out. Messy. There's the backbone. Overboard. And put the body in the tumble bag. That for all 20 and then what we do is we drag the tumbler bag behind the boat at about eight eight ten kilometers an hour for a good 15 minutes and these will come out like as if they've been tumbled in bleach so white it's not funny no slime job done sometimes it even pulls sometimes it even pulls the wings off them all right Slide down the stopper ring. Chuck them overboard. And the boat is up. Yes. Alright, get back to you. Have a look. Wow. Let's open them up. 
And there we have it, nice and clean. 20 or Ford Hackings jewels. There's the uh, all the heads and tentacles. They come up delicious. Marinate those in kiwi fruit overnight. Um, puree some kiwi fruit. Same with the uh, squid hoods. Um, when you want to cook them, cut them up in your pieces. Marinate, um, ki uh, sorry, puree some kiwi fruit. Um, then put them in a Ziploc bag with the kiwi fruit overnight in the fridge. And the next day, just wash off the kiwi fruit. And I kid you not, these things will melt in your mouth. They will break under the force of the tongs as you're trying to cook them. That's how tender they come out. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I suppose you could call it on how I go about catching my squid. Uh, it's been exciting and interesting to to make. Uh, I love making these little videos. Some find them worthwhile. Some don't. But I just do it for anyone who wants to have a look at the way I do things. Um, it's not the right way, it's not the only way, but it's the way I do it. And if it um, helps you in your quest to go out there and catch some squid, so be it. Um, it's always hard to get that first squid and to keep the patience up, um, to find the location. But once you find your mojo and once you, uh, once you just get the knack of it, it's, it's so much fun. You're working those rods all day or even if it's just one rod, you work in that rod all day. Um, it's an amazing feeling when you catch one. It's an amazing feeling when you cook one. Um, it's an amazing feeling when you can put others onto them as well. Um, and they are just purely some of the best things that come out of the ocean. Uh, my, my kids love eating them. My friends love eating them. Um, and all that in the gorgeous waters outside of Port Hacking. All right, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Um, give us a like, send us a comment, ask me some questions if you like, I'll do my best to answer, uh, I'm not going to give you GPS coordinates, but I will um, do my best to point you in the right direction. Thanks for watching, cheers.